We're following some breaking news right now in the Georgia, ca Georgia case against former President Donald Trump. You are looking at a live look right now inside the courtroom in Atlanta. The judge ruling Trump and 16 others will be tried separately from two of the other defendants, all accused of attempting to overturn results in the 2020 election in Georgia. Yeah, we know uh, that uh, some of the defendants have been trying to sever in the pairs they have. This comes as former White House Chief of Staff Mark Meadows suffered a major setback in his attempt to be protected from conviction in Georgia as he fights to move the state prosecution to federal court. Well, correspondent John Glasgow, he is following both of these breaking developments. He's live in our New York newsroom now. Hey, John. Hey, guys. Yeah, law lawyers for Sidney Powell and Kenneth Chisborough will be tried separately from former President Trump and other co-defendants in the Georgia election case, but the judge ruled that the two could be tried together next month. Lawyers for Chesbro and Powell both had previously filed speedy trial demands and had asked for two separate trials, uh, arguing that their clients don't know each other and are not accused in the indictment of having participated in the same acts. So the lawyers suggesting evidence against them could taint the other. Judge McAfee denied two trials, uh, but did agree to both that they could be separated from former President Trump and the other co-defendants in the case since both Chesbro and Powell want a speedy trial. So meantime, U.S. District Judge Steve Jones rejected Mark Meadows' motion for an emergency stay in Georgia. Meadows looking to avoid conviction in state court while still fighting to move his case to federal court. Meadows still has pending motions with two courts seeking a similar pause. So Meadows faces two counts in the Fulton County court case, including a racketeering indictment, along with former President Trump and 17 other individuals who allegedly attempted to overturn the 2020 presidential election. So Meadows argued the allegations against him were within the scope of his duties as White House chief of staff, so the charges must be moved to federal court in his fight for immunity. So the judge previously rejected those arguments in moving the case. Meadows is now appealing the decision to the 11th Circuit Court of Appeals and asked to pause his prosecution until the appeal is resolved. However, the judge ruled Meadows, quote, failed to show he is entitled to federal removal because he was not acting in the scope of his federal office at the time of the acts alleged. So District Attorney Fawny Willis filed documents opposing Meadows' request for the 11th Circuit for a pause. She wants to try all the defendants together. So this latest motion could play a larger role in the case, as Trump has said that he may ask to move his case to federal court. But Bob Christina, the rejection of Meadows' request may indicate how the judge will respond if the former president does so. But this latest decision throws a curveball into what a judge may rule. Yeah, John Glasgow, thank you for that report. We know uh, that they had been trying to get severed. They apparently have, and uh, we'll certainly keep an eye on what's going on down there in Fulton County, Georgia. But this next year. Uh, everybody we talk to, every political discussion, all uh, it, it talks a lot about Trump. But when it comes to Joe Biden, people say, man, he's too old to run, isn't he? I mean, he's not going to he's not really going to run. Every discussion, when I say every discussion, I don't mean 99% of the discussions. Every discussion, we got it. I asked Reverend Al if he was hearing it all the time on our show this past week. He's hearing it as well. Quite the hot topic, Joe Biden's age. Everyone is talking about it. The national discussion focuses on whether he is too old to seek a second term. Even the establishment media is paying close attention to that. Our political panel is here to weigh in. Hogan Gidley is the former national press secretary for former President Trump in the campaign and the principal press secretary in the Trump White House. Ken Cuccinelli is the founder of the Never Back Down PAC. Welcome, gentlemen. Thank you for being on National Report. Hogan, we're going to start with you first. Now, before we talk about the age controversy, I want to talk about really what is hypocrisy uh, in the comments coming out of Democrats from the Biden administration. You know, Democrats, they investigated President Trump for a long time based on what was a lot of nonsense. And they never found anything. And now they don't seem to like what's happening to them. Yeah. I mean, they, they broke it. Uh, they're going to have to buy it. And the fact of the matter is Donald Trump was impeached over a phone call with Vladimir Zelensky, where he asked about Biden corruption. Biden in the impeachment inquiry is about his actual corruption that Donald Trump was talking about. So again, the whole thing is a joke. The American people are starting to see through it. But if you're going to proceed with these impeachment proceedings, you're going to have to bring the public along. And the bar for Republicans to clear is much higher than that of the Democrats. As you know, they can make any claim. Uh, without evidence, uh, no need to back it up, and the media will run with it writ large. I'm looking at you, Adam Schiff. 
Uh, and Republicans have to do this more meticulously. They have done so to this point. Mountains of evidence here that really are going to hurt Joe Biden politically, but I would also argue legally as well. And just because all of a sudden the Democrats are hip to the fact that Joe Biden is old and he has a steep cognitive physical decline going on, them stating the obvious should not be met with any type of applause from the rest of us. This is something everyone has already known and sees every single day. The fact that the media is reporting on it just shows how bad they've been at their job. I mean, Ken, people are talking about it. I was watching an, a Netflix comedy special where the comedian said every time Joe Biden finishes a speech, he just turns into a Roomba. He doesn't really know where to go. And, and it's funny, <laughs> but it's also it's really sad. I mean, our, our president of the United States is being reduced to just not understanding where he is once he finishes uh, reading uh, from almost a like a punch or his line. notes. Right. And, and it, it, it's a massive issue facing Washington right now is, is the age. We even see Mitt Romney. He made headlines yesterday right. saying that he won't run. And this is why. At the end of another term, I'd be in my mid-80s. Frankly, it's time for a new generation of leaders. They're the ones that need to make the decisions that will shape the world they will be living in. Now, we face critical challenges, mounting national debt, climate change, and the ambitious authoritarians of Russia and China. Neither President Biden nor former President Trump are leading their party to confront those issues. I mean, can, can we talk about that, but also just the fact that he's like, all right, I'm out, here's all of the issues that are facing the next generation. Right. Well, you know, there are, most folks won't believe a politician. Mitt Romney is a politician, but actions still do speak louder than words. And frankly, Americans are not used to politicians leading by example in ways that reduce their power. And that is what Mitt Romney's doing by stepping out. And he's emphasizing the age issue using himself as the example. You could hardly be more credible than that. And, and he points to Biden and Trump, the two oldest in each party, really, in terms of leadership. Um, but it's also McConnell. We saw, we've seen his declining health, Schumer, Pelosi. This is an across-the-board thing. And while Biden is in the worst shape of them all, he's tripping over himself. Donald Trump has clearly lost a step. He's not keeping the energetic uh, pace of campaigning he kept in 2015. He doesn't appear able to do that. And this is a, this is a decision both parties are confronting at the same time. And polls show that just when you take the people out of it, that Americans do want to see a generational shift. And there are candidates, I obviously support one of them, Ron DeSantis, who are, would fit into that generational shift and are perfectly capable of leading this country. And I would say in the case of Governor DeSantis, better than anyone else out there. Gentlemen, uh, r real quick before we go, don't, not a super long answer. I kind of just want a, a, a quick opinion. Hogan, you go first. And Ken, is Joe Biden going to be the nominee uh, the next time around, or is something big going to shake down? I say yes, but I promise he would not get through a second term. No way. Ken? Yeah. Yeah, I think he will, mostly because he's going to be propped up by the Democrat establishment. Um, because they don't like the alternative of the civil war they would face if he stepped back. Well, uh, we'll see. There's a lot of growing talks about that. We even heard Nancy Pelosi make comments uh, about Kamala Harris not necessarily giving her a ton of support. So uh, we know yeah. it's going to get interesting as we proceed through the next couple of months. Hogan Gidley, Ken Cuccinelli. Gentlemen, thank you.